Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. Today I'd like to continue and finish the vertex processing routine. First, I'll write a function to process UV coordinates similar to what we did for vertex normals. Then I'll pack the resulting vertices in a final format which will be loaded to the GPU and used in the vertex shader. Let's start by writing the function for processing UV coordinates. For the UVs, it will be a bit simpler since we don't have to do these kind of calculations. We just compare the UVs directly and if they are not the same, then we split the vertices. Because in this function, we are going to generate new vertices, depending on their UV coordinates, we need to swap an empty array of vertices with the vertices that we already had. So the old vertices will be here in this array, and we have an empty array here in the mesh, so we can fill that in. And we are going to do the same with the indices. And since we already know that the number of indices will not change, we just reserve this chunk of memory to hold the indices for us. And again, I'm going to create the uh, index references for each vertex. Here again, we are adding one vertex to the array of vertices, and therefore we take the index of the new vertex here and set it in the array of indices. And then we take a reference to the old vertex that is referred to by this index and just set its UV coordinate. And in the next for loop, we will check if there are any UV coordinates in these references that differ from the UV coordinate that we already have. And if that's the case, then we again need to split this vertex.
Here we check if the UV coordinate for the other references is the same as the first UV coordinate that we got. And if they are almost equal up to a really small number, so basically if they are equal, then we just merge these indices and remove that reference and go to the next one. And if they are all equal, then we are left with the first vertex that we added in. And otherwise, there are more references here. And that basically splits all these vertices into multiple vertices with different UV coordinates, just as happened here for normal vectors as well. And finally, we need to pack all these vertices that we got here, which will form our final output data to the level editor. And there we will pick that up in the rest of the pipeline. So let's write this function now. Here we need to define what the format is of each vertex that we are going to send to the GPU. And that I can define here in geometry as well. We are going to have different kinds of vertices, depending on whether the mesh that we are sending to GPU is animated, for example, so there should be some joint data in there, or it's a static mesh, or there is some mesh that has colored vertices for blending purposes. So we need a new namespace here that is packed vertices and will contain the data structures that we need for different kinds of vertices. Here I defined one possible format for a vertex for a static mesh. It contains three floating point values for position. And then we have a total of four bytes, of which three we don't use. And the last one contains information about the normal and tangent, because the tangent space of this vertex will be packed. And you can use different methods to do that, like uh, octahedral packing and those kind of things. But I'm going to just use a really simple method of compressing these floating point values into 16-bit values and then use the x and y coordinate, knowing that the normal of a vertex is normalized, so it has unit length. And therefore, I can calculate the z components just by using x and y components. But because the normal can point in different directions, that means that the Z component can have negative or positive sign. And that I can't really calculate. So I need to store that in this T sign. So if the Z component had a negative sign, then I'll store zero in bit one. And if it was positive, I'll store one in there. And the tangents we are not using yet. And the last component is the UV coordinates. And then we need to add a new member here in the mesh structure to contain this array of packed vertices. First of all, our mesh will also have a name, so include it here. And I also added two more members here, load threshold, beyond which we will switch to another level of detail. And the load ID denotes which meshes belong together in one level of detail object. 
This will come into play more when we are importing objects from 3D files. But now first we are going to store the packed vertices here in this array. Here we need to write functions that will scale and pack a floating point value in an integer of the given number of bits. And therefore I'm going to write a couple of template functions that can do this for us. First I'm going to write a template function that can pack a floating point value that's between 0 and 1 into an integer of a given length. Here is a number of bits that we want to use from an integer. First, I need to calculate in how many chunks I can chop a value of this many bits. So here we scale this floating point value by this interval and then add half to it to account for the rounding of floating point values to integers. And this will effectively result in a packed integer that we can unpack to get back the floating point value that we had. Here again we assert that the number of bits isn't larger than the 32 bits that we have available in a 32-bit integer. And that the number that we are giving as a parameter doesn't exceed the number that would fit in an integer of this many bits. Again, we calculate the number of intervals and the reverse of this calculation, which would be just dividing the value by intervals and then we get the f back. Using these functions, we can pack floating point values that are between 0 and 1. But in our case, the normal values are in the range of minus 1 and plus 1. So we need to scale these to a range of 0 and 1 so that we can pack them in this range. And therefore, I'm going to write another pack and unpack functions so that we can use those. First, we assert that the minimum and the maximum of the range are in the right order, so minimum should be less than maximum, and also that the value of f is between the value of minimum and the maximum. And then we just scale this floating point value depending on this range. This distance function will give us a value between 0 and 1. So if f equals the minimum value, this will give us 0. And if f equals the maximum value, these terms will become equal and it returns 1. So this basically scales this value to a range between 0 and 1. And therefore we can now use the other functions that we already have here.
And to unpack, it's just the reverse of this again. Here we have this value in the unpack function as the parameter, and we need to calculate f. And we can do that by multiplying by this term and then adding the minimum to it, and then it will get us the value of f back. One caveat is, of course, that we need to remember what range we use to pack this floating point value and use the same range to unpack it, otherwise it will give us the wrong value, of course. So when we use these functions here, we need to use the same ranges to unpack the normal value in the shaders that we are going to use. Now we have got everything that we need to fill in one of those packed vertices. Here we can right away copy the value of the position and an array of three bytes that we are not using in this vertex static. And then the signs and an array of two components, which contain the X component of the normal and the Y component of the normal. And then just an empty array for our tangents because we are not using those yet and the value of the UV coordinates. Okay, I see I made a typo here. The normal components should be U16. So let me fix that here and then we are done. And this concludes what I wanted to do for today. Now we can create a plane procedurally and send it to processing, which will also be used when we are going to import any 3D object from other software, not just for these procedurally generated meshes, but also for imported meshes. So that's good that we can reuse these parts. And next time I'm going to go and implement packing data in a binary blob so we can send it to the level editor and handle the geometry further in the level editor in the rest of the pipeline. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus, there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time. Until then, take care and happy game engineering.